generic greetings and welcome back once again to Airships Conquer the Skies. Today's beverage is a very refreshing apple and blackberry juice drink. Very nice indeed. So welcome back to Airships Conquer the Skies. It has been a while, hasn't it? We haven't done any conquest modes or designing and fighting in quite some time. So it's time to rectify that with this video. And specifically, we're going to be looking at flamethrowers. Why flamethrowers? Well, if we go over to design and fight and the airship editor, we can see that in our designs, we have a lot of things prefixed with the SP. And that means that we've made this design. So you've got the bluebird, the bumblebee, the goldfinch, greenfinch, heron, etc. Some are good, some are not so good, and they're all based around either a specific weapon or a specific design. So the Sparrowhawk charges in, drops loads of troops off. The Greenfinch peppers everything with the Gatling gun. The Bluebird is overpowered with its Suspendium Ray. So either way, we have a lot of designs here, but nothing when it comes to flamethrowers. And the reason I want to make a flamethrower is we have things like the Wasp, which is very cheap very inexpensive design and it has these rockets so you can field a lot of them you can sort of spam them i want a ship that is maybe not similar in cost but similar in function as in we can spam a lot of them but they will charge at the enemy and then set them on fire and then watch the fire spread so i'm not too bothered about what happens to these little ships they are literally fire ships so we'll see what happens there so over to our weapons and we'll see what we can use for the weapons well obviously we have the flamethrower we have the giant flame thrower and i'm pretty confident that'll be about it obviously you have rockets which can cause fire and things like that but no that'll be okay for now so we have two <laughs> the default name is the kitten that's uh, fairly cute so anyway we have two flamethrowers let's have a quick look at both of them so the flamethrower and the giant flamethrower both are tier 3 combustible technology so if we we're running a campaign in the conquest mode whatever then we will need tier 3 the blast damage is 5 on the flamethrower and 15 on the giant, so 3 times on the giant, which is pretty good. Rate of fire is both 20 per second. Clip size is 100 and 120 for the small and large, respectively. Fire arc is... Yeah, it's a bit different, but I don't really care too much about the fire arc. The maximum range, 35 and 50, so you can get a lot more range on the on the larger one there. Uh, we've got uh, shoots troops and planes within 28 meters for both of them. The weight and HP, I'm not too concerned about, although the HP is 30 on the flamethrower and 150 on the larger one, which means that actually uh, 369, 12, oh, it's 120 for the... Uh, same area if we have so basically that, the, the heavy one occupi occupies four times the space so we still profit when it comes to the HP and it requires about double the number of crew members yes both of them are flammable but don't have the may explode, uh, may explode thing some of them are weapons wise are slightly flammable some of them are flammable and some are explodes easily so these don't explode easily but they are flammable so we have to worry about that the main takeaway is the, I guess, the weight, which is 30 as opposed to 200. Obviously, if you want to make quite fast, light ships that are cheap, then weight is at a premium. And also, the cost for this thing is... Let's have a quick look. The cost on the flamethrower is 64 and, ooh, 516 for the giant flamethrower. So that pretty much seals the deal. We have to use the small ones. So let's put two flamethrowers in a row and let's see what we can do. As I said, I'm trying to make a quite low cost design. So I don't really have any number in mind. Uh, three, four hundred, maybe? Maybe? I don't really know. As long as we have a service ceiling of about 150 and the speed is okay, then that's all that really matters. So we could go with suspendium chambers. We could go with gas bags. Most likely we'll go with the latter because they are like a pack massive suspendium bonus to give us that uh, service ceiling, give us that height, but propulsion wise I don't know whether we've got off a propeller or not. We've also got different sails and such so we'll see. Anyway over to our resources and to the small ammo store. So we'll have a small coal, small ammo store. Where is ammo store? Ammo store is there. Uh, can't see the wood for trees uh small ammo store there it is and then we'll place that in here actually what we'll do is i'll place it maybe there we're going to go over to command and crew we'll put a cockpit in there which has a ladder that goes down and then we'll be able to put things like a berth in there which connects them all up uh crew is three recommended is seven so i may actually uh, instead put some quarters on it so maybe i've put that there move that down that goes in there that goes in here still haven't got any connection between the two but we shall see um yeah crew 12 recommended seven so we've overcrewed it but we haven't got any of anything else in 
the time being. So I guess we'll go with a corridor with ladder there. Oh, actually, can we use a supply hatch? No, it doesn't have a top ladder, which is a bit of a shame. So that's in. We've got our we got our ammo, we got our crew, we got the way to command it, and we got the two flamethrowers. We now need propulsion and some sort of uh, some sort of lift as well. So we could go with, for example, a suspendium dust tank on the bottom there. That is ridiculous. Service ceiling was over 300. A uh, standard suspendium tank would give us an 83 meter service ceiling. That is not enough. The end cap, we could probably just rotate that around and put an end cap on the back there. 92 meter service ceiling is not terrible. Um, we've also got dust tanks with ladders, so I can place that there, for example, and then place like a ladder in the back. That gives us 85 meters. Mm, actually, <laughs> strangely, it goes down. Um, <laughs> it's not, yeah, it, it's not very good that at all, is it? Okay, fair enough. We'll uh, we'll probably forego that one. So most likely, then we'll end up with. Well, hang on. What would it be? What a, what would a small suspendium? Oh, a small suspendium chamber would give us 187 meters service ceiling so maybe we run with that it does mean we have to go with coal though we have to have some coal on board well what if we tell you what we'll place that there move that around uh, put in some propulsion or resources and then coal store small coal store has a similar um, sort of connecting point let's put another flamethrower in and then that gives us 144 meters what else do we want to do then? We could go with propulsion small propeller and that would be, if we just unflip that, put that on the back there. No, we'll have to put it further down. And there you go. It is 133 meters service ceiling, which is not really what I wanted. Uh, we haven't got supply. I'll sort that out in a moment. Uh, speed is 92, which is really fast. If, for example, we didn't have that and we had one of these sails on the top, it uh, is 211 kilometers an hour but it's only 64 meters service ceiling which is not good enough what about this little sail here that is again really fast but no uh, a junk sail which is uh, again really fast we got these different ones here i'm just going to try all the sails out top sail would be oh that's actually not too bad but it's still going to reduce our service ceiling there is a standard sail which is yeah it's not good enough and then we got that on the top, which is, yeah, it's just far too large. Okay, so... <laughs> okay, yes, that's um, fairly ridiculous. Uh, the speed is excellent, but we're not going to last very long. Engine pod would be... No, no, I think we got it right the first time. So over to a propeller, and then the propeller will go in the back like so. Is there a way we can make this a little bit more efficient? I'm not entirely sure. What I'll do is go to our um, basic and then the wooden supply hatch. Wooden supply hatch will go on the back there. And that is now legitimate. It will function like that. So, it will work. Is it good? I don't know. Over to armor. Everything is currently just wooden armor. I could go with wood wall. That will give us an extra an extra uh, couple of meters service ceiling. I uh, don't really care about that. Reinforced wooden armor would require reinforced hulls tier 2, which reduces our service ceiling to far too much. Steel armor would give us... Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, We're just going to stick with the wood armor then. We're going to stick with the wood armor and uh, call it there. So we need a name for it. So the standard procedure is SP, so it denotes ourselves for the building. And then we need some sort of, uh, some sort of flying creature, animal, whatever. If it's a, if it's um, an airship, we tend to have something that's flying, that can fly. If we have uh, something that's on the ground, then it's based, like a ground ship, then it's a, like a sort of, Anything that moves on the ground, then anything stationary, it's like a tree or a plant or something. That's what we were going for before. What have we got? Let's go open design. We've got greenfinch, heron, herring gull, honeybee, owl, sparrowhawk, um, herring gull. Which one's that? Oh yeah, that's the thing that drops bombs on you from a great height. Fair enough. All right, I've gone with the robin because, quite frankly, I saw one this morning in the garden. And, obviously, red breast, so it means that, uh, yeah, we've got some similarities when it comes to the colour. In fact, we could probably go ahead and put some decoration on, on there, couldn't we? Let's have a quick look at decoration. And we'll have in 
where would it be? Decorations? No, goalie. There's loads of decorations in the in the game now. We could put some <laughs> could sort of put some flames on it like that. Uh, what if we put that there and then put like an eye there? Mm, that just looks absolutely ridiculous. But is that a bad thing? Uh, yeah, let's go with. <laughs> Where's that going to look better? Right at the front or there? Uh, that's about okay. That's fine. Okay, so we've got the SP Robin and we will save the design and job done. Let's see what this thing is like. So over to combat, we are going to go with a day fight. Normally I open up the airship, which is the Robin, and we place it there. Service ceiling is already a little bit too low, I think. We may have to alter that by putting something on it. I'll have to decide and we're gonna say with an airship it's 300 nod i'll tell you what they've got a bat and it can go <laughs> see already we'd uh, be defeated because we can't go any higher than where we are now so yeah that would be us pretty much dead although it might get there no probably not okay so airship um We've got this thing here, which is all to do with rifles. We've got the Cranium, which is a rammer. Uh, the Creosote, there you go. That's a reasonable fight, I would say. They are slightly underpointed. Um, I'm going to move them further back there, start the fight, and then quickly go forward. So they have uh, two cannons, and we have the flamethrowers. So I've ordered us to go forward, and <laughs> we've overshot that massively. <clears throat> Okay, well that's not good. So move, flip and go to there. So I've told them to move and flip. This thing has rammed into the floating rock. We are now into flamethrower range. Although the... Uh, it looks like their recoil is taking them further back. And that has pretty much destroyed their ship. They are... Well, they've already got lost a cannon. And looks like the flamethrowers has managed to uh, set them all on fire. We have a slight problem that we don't have anything left on the ship when it comes to weaponry because of the shots that they've uh, fired our way. But they are burning, and that is the main... I mean, that's one of the main things when it comes to fire. That's one of the main traits, you would say, wouldn't you, when it uh, comes to fire. And all I need to do now is stay away. I just need to be out of their arc of fire. The problem is that the command timing is really poor on this. So I just need to keep ordering myself to go where they're not and they've just fallen right out of the sky and there's another explosion and they are now defeated. Although to be fair, to say that we came off any better is, well, <laughs> not exactly that accurate. You can see we have won, everybody's celebrating even though they've got no front of the ship left and if we go to um, outside view we'd probably see, yeah, they've got no crew, that uh, we've lost a lot of stuff. So, hmm, okay, accuracy is poor, but it's flamethrower, it's a spammy weapon. Um... Shots fired, it says 284, because it's like 20 a second, I think. And uh, we didn't use much ammo. <clears throat> Admittedly, that's because the uh, the ship was, you know, destroyed uh, pretty much after the first couple of shots. Okay, so open airship. Uh, we'll have our Robin once again, which will go there. We'll go for a... Is there a cheap land ship? There's the Inferno, which is... It's a similar thing. It's got three flamethrowers, uh, so I don't think taking that on would be desirable. We'll check out airships once again. Um, we've got this thing here, the Deathly Wind, which is... I think that's a boarding vessel. Yeah, marine barracks there. So maybe if we go with something like the Unmatched, which is 100 and... how many points is it? It is 1,334. So let's use these uh, Robins as they were intended. So one, two, three, that would be overpointed. So we'll just have uh, three of them in total and start the fight, wait until it starts to manoeuvre, then we're going to move maneuver down. Maneuver, maneuver? Yeah, yeah, maneuver. And um, there's the flames there. So immediately we are flaming the... <laughs> flaming this thing. I'm going to order the other one up and round like so. I'm not actually ramming in forward. That wasn't what I've uh, ordered, but uh, it seems to be working out quite well. Let's just move that further forward as well. Flamethrower uh, number two is also uh, getting a little bit uh, out of position, so I'm going to move that down. I'm going to try and flank it, but I don't know if that's going to work out, so there we go. They've already lost a lot of their stuff. Um, there's explosions all over the place, which is good for us, but bad for them. I am taking some shots back, but nothing that's going to cause us a massive amount of problems. I'm overcommitting a lot of these uh, orders here because it's already drifting back. Uh, what I'm seeing here as well is that it's lost most of its weapons, and there's the flame going on. <laughs> wow, we've caused so much fire to ourselves. I don't know if uh, I don't know if that's to do with. 
where's it going? There we go. I don't know if that's to do with when you flame and go forward there, you see all these like particles come out. And I don't know whether you can drive into your own fire, but this thing is certainly uh, not going to... Oh, there we go. Nice, nice, nice. Looks like it's lost all, all propulsion. Uh, yeah, this thing is certainly on fire, as is the opponent. Um, it looks like it has actually surrendered. So is, is that Vic and Terry? I think both Vic and Terry are coming out of play. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so the HMS Unmatched is now a mobile. Hmm. I think it's also lost a majority of its weapons. We have one of the Robins a mobile, one of them with no crew, and the other one has survived. Okay. Let's try that again. Combat. Day fight. We'll add the airship of... Hmm. Vanguard. And put that right at the back. Airship. Robin. One. Two. Three. Four. Slightly overpointed. But let's see what happens. Tell them to move forward. Now this thing is armed with aerial torpedoes. So they fire. And they obviously head towards ourselves. But. The main thing is that. Uh, so we can get around the back here quickly. Yeah. Uh, the main thing is that we can outmaneuver them and. Good grief. And, uh. Win. <laughs> apparently. <laughs> okay. Alright. I did not expect that. I thought we may get. I thought the first shot we'd, we definitely avoid because it's firing them from back here on the right to left. And we'd have already moved off. And the. the, the projectile speed is really low on the aerial torpedoes but I didn't think we'd win after that I thought we'd get another volley well, they'd get another volley off okay back to combat it is raining so we're going to keep it on that just to see what happens see how much rain will affect this thing I think we'll put in a honeybee so this is one of ours ah no we'd already lose because that would go there and airship robin too low oh we can technically flame a little bit Let's just put those in. It's very close. It's only 65 points between us. It's going to put that there and just move forward. And let's see if we get any flame on them. Not a single, not a single thing. So they can sit there with impunity. Doesn't help when lightning strikes us as well. Okay, let's leave that. I do think that we need more service ceiling. So, airship editor. Open the design. Get the robin out. How can we increase the service ceiling? Speed, I'm not too bothered about. It's fine. Lift, though. We might benefit from a suspendium chamber. 307 meters service ceiling. No, it's too much. Two of those, however, would give us 200 meters service ceiling at a reasonable cost. Okay. Another thing I could probably do is add another bridge. Oh, it's only a second we gain on commands. So, like that maybe. What's the other option? Spendium dust tank? <clears throat> no, not really. Pressurized suspendium. No. Moon disk fragment. Oh yeah, that'll sort us right out. Yeah, yeah, it just requires, you know... Uh, the bonus of moon disc fragment. Somehow we get that. I don't know. That's unreasonable. Alright, I think what we did in the first place was about right. So we'll place that in there. Because we can, we're going to go with solid shapes. Put that in there. Save the design. Just going to save it as the robin. We're going to overwrite the previous one. Leave that. Combat. So... Let's try what we were just facing off against there. So that was the honeybee. We'll add in the airship of Robin. One, two, three, four, five, six. We are 102 points more expensive. Obviously, this is an optimal fight for us. And when this top one falls out the sky, which it's about to do any second... All of these are going to get crushed, so I need to move them. Oh, that one's our suspendium chamber. This is why you never stack things. 
Or rather, it's very undesirable to stack things. You always leave a little bit of space. And I think... That's a win already. Good grief. So, we obviously have water. There's the water. It's raining. They have all the bonuses. Allegedly. What they don't have is, sh is a ship left. So, let's just bring these along. Uh, that one I can't order. This one I'll have to just bring down. And we'll just claim that. Okay. Okay. That seemed to work. What I'll do, though... Go to combat again. Still raining. Fair fight. Airship. Honeybee. Right at the back. Uh, airship. Robin. One, two, three, four, five, six. So same again. The difference is I'm not stacking them on top of each other. And also... It's really far away, so the whole point in this thing is it just uses its zappy guns and hits his long range. But, we're having to move it towards them now. So it's probably going to destroy one or even two by the time we get there. Although, as he says that, um, neither of those things have happened. We've managed to get round. And keep manoeuvring in such a way that... Good grief. Um... Yeah, lots of them have fallen out of the sky now. Let's move these over here. We've taken out some of their gas bags. That one can't move anymore. That one we have to get close. The problem is that they are still fighting, even though they've got really poor service ceiling now because of losing that. They are still able to zap us. I'm trying to get around the back, but they're still able to maneuver. They've still got weapons. Oh, they've just lost one. They've lost one weapon. Um, I need to move this. And I need to move it quickly. I don't know where he's going to go. And this thing... Get out the way. There we go. <laughs> that's, th that's still got some propulsion. Uh, that one I can't move. Oh, we've lost propulsion on that one. We could possibly use this one to push the other, but no, no, it's just falling out of the sky. Okay. These standard problems still occur with a big spammy fleet. They just get in the way of each other. And this thing did its job. At long range, zap, 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 and uh, yeah, we lost a lot of ships. So, we could go for perhaps some more armour, but then we're getting beyond the scope of these things, which were quite a fast thing that gets in there and, well, attacks. If we were to redesign it, Airship editor, open design. Robin. Could go with steel armour on the front, like that. That would give us a lot more armour and a lot more HP. No, same HP. Cost-wise, we'd only go by a small amount. If we were to fill it with steel armour, it would raise the cost considerably. Yeah, steel armour on the front. Armour the front thing. Let's see Let's see what happens. Save the design. Does mean more technology. But we'll see how we go. Go to combat. If does like putting us on storms. <laughs> um, airship. Let's go for the Herring Gull, actually. I don't know what its maximum service ceiling is. Probably more than this thing, though. Robin. No. I think it can go a lot higher than we can. And this is made of metal. <laughs> it's doing exactly what I thought it would do. And that is sitting right above our vessels, dropping the bombs on us. And as you can see, we're causing pretty much no damage. We're able to cause... Oh yeah, we're causing a tiny bit of damage, but it's you know, it's not working out. It's not right. We'll, we'll, we'll just leave that. That's that's a loss. Um, <laughs> back to combat. Oh, look. A wintry day fight now. We'll do airships and... Well, that'd be fun to verse, wouldn't it? The ISS Vindicator. Pre-made ship. 
It's in the game. Costs 5,301. Gonna go to airships over to the Robin. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Eleven. We're a little bit overpointed. We'll remove that. And uh, start the fight. So, obviously, none of them are in range. I have no idea what this thing's going to do in terms of orders. Apparently, it's coming towards me. It's got two large turrets, two big cannons on the front. Got a, one at the bottom as well, plus two flat cannons. That's what I can see. It may also have other weaponry uh, placed wherever. And, oh, we're actually going into a position where the flat cannon... <laughs> we got in range of the flat cannon. I say we're in range. We got... Uh, we went right over the top of it there, and then we fell out the sky. Um, a lot of our damage uh, is actually from just falling on the ship, which is an interesting way of doing things. I know that's uh, a lot of people have suggested us doing that, make things like a heavy keeled ship. That just fell out the sky. A heavy keeled ship, so that when we uh, when we go over the top, we can then just say uh, one, of the, one of the orders is to, uh, to land, and just do it that way. Um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thought. I don't know how effective it would be but we shall see anyway there's all of the flames there you can see they are heavily focused on on this turret here but it's not doing much damage in fact i would reasonably say that the most of the damage that we've caused is by ramming um which is not what i originally intended but i guess the end result is about the same we are causing a ridiculous amount of damage in a short amount of time so that's the whole point of this thing we're supposed to be like a shock vehicle but you can see the big difference. Oh, that thing just fell out the sky and just it's absolutely destroyed the front end. Hmm. Yeah, the problem that we have. Do we have any, any other vessels? No. The problem we have is that we can't get through this armor. It only has. This thing only has uh, one more gun left anyway, that thing. Uh, ram over to there. Yes. And then we'll ram that. Then it should be class disabled because it's got no weapons. Ram. And... <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. It's like... <laughs> headbutting a viaduct. <laughs> just, just... There's only one winner on that one. Uh, right. We should have to ram. Yeah, it's taking a bit of armour off and that's about it. I don't know why it does that. It goes down when you tell it to go when tell it to go forward. One of these must still transfer crew to that. No. Oh. So one of these still must have some sort of armor. Bring that up there. Suspend your offline apparently on this. There's a lot more than it's offline. That can't move. This one will ram forward. And we just took the bridge out. Okay. So. There's only really one winner on that one. And that's, um... The repair yards back at base. <laughs> what was that? Nine Robins versus this thing? We were a little bit underpointed. Looks like it's going to come off with a draw. It's a draw. So, the Vindicator, a mobile. We are either grounded, a mobile, or destroyed. So, accuracy 73%, which is good. They were on 89%. Damage dealt, 32,000. Damage dealt for them, 8,000. Okay. I don't know how much that damage was caused by ramming, by the flames, or whatever. But it didn't seem to burn very well. Okay, well, we're going to leave it there for now. That's been a bit of airships conquer the skies. We have, we have seen the implementation of the sp robin original idea was to make something that was quite cheap uh, that could rush in and set stuff on fire does it do that well it sort of fulfills the cheap needs at 491 generic units of currency not overly inexpensive but certainly not as expensive as a lot of the other designs we have technology wise we only need um energized suspendium tier one and flamethrower tier three plus the armor which was, uh, was it steel armor? Steel armor, which is metallurgy tier 2. So the highest technology is tier 3 on this thing. So that's okay. The flames were also missing, so we'll put those back on. Um, 
Yeah, it's got 192 meter service ceiling, which is reasonable for what it needs to uh, what it needs to do. I guess obviously high level bombers and things you're not going to ever get to, but it's reasonable. Uh, speed is excellent at 86. The main concern is the command 11 second command time. Yeah. Yeah, we probably need to make that a bit better, but then again, it would be quite expensive. Would it be best to make a bigger ship, maybe the sort of thousand point mark, with a proper bridge rather than the cockpit, and have a larger flamethrower? I don't know. Did the armor help? Do we need the extra service ceiling? Could we just go with... Uh, let me just save this design. Could we just go with something like the... Um, where is it? Sorry. Uh, it is the the Wasp, and just put flamethrowers on that. Would that would that be better? Low service ceiling. What is it? 31 meters. Mm, that probably would be a bit too much. <laughs> Either way, um, let me know what you think when it comes to designs, changes, alterations, what version you think was better, even improvements in the commanding. What, what do you think we should field it differently or in different formation or with different ships? I would like to know what you think there. And obviously, if you have any designs or suggestions for things, then by all means, let me know in the comments. Hope you have enjoyed this little look at airships and the little uh, test bed of the Robin there. Either way, hope you have enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. Comments in the comments. Take care and generic partings.